we try to settle into the present moment. Sometimes you find there are sticks and rocks and thorns there, either in the body or in the mind. And so you have to do your best to deal with them. It would be nice if there were nice, easy instructions, one, two, three, four, first you do this and first you do that. And there are instructions like that in meditation, but often the mind doesn't go like that. Ideally, you should be able to let the mind settle down and grow calm and then have to deal with issues. But sometimes before you can settle down, there are issues you've got to deal with. This is what the recollections are for. And this is a very preliminary way of using your discernment. In other words, it's not just the case that discernment requires concentration. Concentration also requires discernment. Learning how to bypass whatever issues you can bypass, and how to deal directly with the ones that you have to deal with before you can let, get the mind to settle down. In other words, if there's rampant lust or rampant anger in the mind, you've got to deal with it. You can't pretend that it's not there. You can't shove it off into the corner because it keeps jumping out of the corner back at you. So you remind yourself of the drawbacks of that kind of thinking. You look to see where there's a lack of reason or a lack of logic in that kind of thinking. Because many times it just comes on with a lot of force. When it comes down with a lot of force, it's like a person who comes at you with a lot of force. Usually they, they're very lacking in reason, and so they use force to make up for it. But if you look at your lust, you look at your anger, you look at your fears, and try to see, well, what are they actually saying? Sometimes you have to listen to them. And if you listen really carefully, you'll see that, after all, they don't make any sense. And when you can see that, it's a lot easier to put them aside. When they come back at you, say, you're not making any sense at all. And then you've got a handle on them. The same with physical pain in the body. Sometimes you sit down and meditate and there's pain. It has nothing to do with sitting in the meditation posture. It's just, okay, there's pain in the body. Then you learn how to deal with it. focus on other parts of the body, so you get at least some sense of having a beachhead in the present moment, a place where you can stay and you're, and you're okay. And then you work from that position of strength. This, uh, once you get the sense of the breath going smoothly and comfortably, okay, you let it expand from that spot to move into other parts of the body, move through the part where there's the pain, and out the feet, and out the hands. And you begin to realize that these, these thorns in the present, they're not just a given. There has to be part of you that's playing along with them, that makes them a problem. Once you can see that, then they're a lot easier to deal with. In other words, sometimes there's a pain in the body, and the way you're breathing is actually maintaining it. Sometimes it's your fear that it's going to spread, so you build a little net of tension around it. And that net of tension may keep the pain from spreading, but it also keeps it in existence. The breath energy doesn't flow smoothly there, and it helps maintain the pain. And when you catch yourself doing this, and you get an interesting insight. The present moment is not just something given. You are participating in it. There's an element of your intention that shapes it. And then you can turn around and use this same principle with the mind. In other words, when there's lust and anger, part of it may be coming from past habit, but there's also your present participation. It's easy to understand this in the case of lust. You're enjoying it. And so you want to continue it. 
part of the mind is enjoying it, part of the mind is actually suffering. What you want to do is bring that part out. Give it some give it some space. Especially in our culture, any people who don't really go with their last are to be said to be repressed and have all kinds of psychological problems. And so the part of the mind that really thrives when it's freed from lust doesn't get a chance to thrive. Gets pu it gets pushed into the corner. It gets the it becomes the part that gets repressed. But if you can ferret out the part of the mind that's really enjoying the lust and say, hey, wait a minute, what kind of enjoyment is this? How about this stress over here? How about this discomfort over there? That sense of dissatisfaction that comes along with the lust, the cloudiness that comes into the mind because of the lust. What about that? And when you can start to underline and bring out the part of the mind that really doesn't enjoy the lust, then you have a better chance of dealing with it. The same with anger. Try to find the part of the mind that's enjoying the anger and seeing what, see what kind of piddling or miserable happiness it gets out of indulging the anger. So you can help strengthen the part of the mind that really doesn't want to play along. The same goes with other emotions in the mind. Fear, greed. Once you catch the part of the mind that's enjoying it, that really is participating, really is keeping it going right now, learn to undercut it. You've gained some important insights into the mind. And then you can start applying the same principle to a positive mind states, the ones you're trying to develop. It's a part of the mind that doesn't want to stay with the breath. You can try to find the part of the mind that does. It really does appreciate settling down and having a chance to put down all of its burdens. The potential is there. It's just that it's not often emphasized. Learn how to emphasize it. Learn how to give yourself pep talks. Look at many of the Dharma talks in Thai. I go through them. when I was translating those Dharma talks for Jama Habua, for straight from the heart and things as they are. I'm going through selecting the talks. To translate. I realize how much of his books, the Dharma talks collections they have, are given over to pep talks, things to give you encouragement. And all the whole string of them doesn't make for the kind of reading that you want in a book. In a book you want something that explains things. But while you're meditating, you do want pep talks to encourage you. And you have to learn how to give yourself your own pep talks. People get easily discouraged. Or the ones who haven't learned that talent, to find interest here in the way you're dealing with the breath, or to give yourself encouragement. See, you did that. You brought the mind back. See if you can do it again the next time. See if you can do it faster. The kind of encouragement you need that keeps you participating in the states of concentration you're trying to get going. After all, if the pet present is not just a given, why don't you learn how to shape a good present? emphasize the positive things, so they really do get stronger. In this way, you find that you're less and less a victim of events. And you play a stronger, more positive role in shaping your experience of the present. We talk many times about how ultimately you want to Learn how to discontinue that participation in, the, participation in the present so you can open up to the deathless. But before you can do that, you've got to get skillful in how you participate in the present moment. You can't skip straight from unskillful participation into the ultimate skill of learning how to open up to the deathless. You've got to go through all the steps of learning how to make the present a more positive experience by the way you breathe, by the way you 
focus on the breath by the way you deal with the various states that come up in the mind, either positive or negative. You've got to learn how to be a better manager of the present moment before you can develop the even more refined skills of learning how to take all this participation apart. So when you sit down to meditate, it's not that everything is just a given. You've got to realize that okay, you're participating right now. What kind of participation do you want to use? Do you want to develop? What kind of participation do you want to let go of to discontinue? So those pains we talked about, the thorns and the stones and everything that make it hard to settle down, they're not just a given. There's also your element of, to help create the stones, to help create, keep the thorns going. If you can catch yourself doing that, it makes it a lot easier to settle down. And to stay settled. So you can see more and more clearly what's going on, and your skill in dealing with the present go in the present moment gets more and more refined. <laughs>